So hello to all my dear students. Welcome you all to sail to MDS Dental Academy. So today we are here with the part 10 of HPSC past paper discussion. Already we have uploaded 9 parts. Please, if anybody have not watched, go in the description box and have a look on it. Because along with question answer, we have explained important concept also. So let's start with the today's video. It's about the attachment. It's a precision attachment, the question is. So which of this attachment is best for cases with very little interocular space. So it is your interofix attachment. Remember aspirin for treating terminally involved dental arches like a free and saddle with a minimum 7 mm clearance between upper and lower ridge. We go for precision attachment. The name only suggests they help for perfect fit of removable partial denture. They are of semi-fixed denture. It means permanently fixed and even removable also. Remember it is a passive kind of retention mechanism. And remember aspirin they use the double tilt retention mechanism. This prevent gravitational and muscular forces from dislodging your partial denture during function. And it also eliminates the torquing stresses that the most abutment are forced to absorb from conventional retentive mechanism. The main disadvantage of single complete denture against natural teeth is abrasion of artificial teeth. In normal dentition, remember, centric relation coincide with centric occlusion. Anterior reference point help in the following except recording centric relation. Your anterior reference point will help in phase board transfer, minor adjustment in vertical dimension and also for arrangement of anterior teeth. Now, aspirin who has given lingualized occlusion concept. It was given by pain. Now, condylar guidance of an articulator is dependent on what? It is dependent on inclination of articular eminence. How much fluoride is present in toothpaste? Remember, aspirin around 1000 ppm. Then, if there is an aging of pulp, is it evident by what element increase? It is evident by increase in fibrous tissue or fibrous element, which is the place where there is a least likely occurrence of carcinoma in the oral cavity. So that is your soft palate. Now each is associated with gastric limitation except acetaminophen that is paracetamol. Other all like alcohol, ibuprofen and indomethacin are associated with gastric limitation. So which injection poses the greatest risk for hematoma? That is your posterior superior alveolar knob block. Now, how do you treat a patient with a type 2 forcation involvement? We go for tissue guided regeneration. Now, organism involved in causing severe spreading of abscesses that is streptococcus. Don't get confused between staphylo and stepto. The correct answer for spreading of abscess is streptococcus. Now, let's see the forcation, its classification, characteristic, and treatment. So, grade 1 forcation. It in involves around 3 mm of area. There is slight bone loss, supra bony pocket and no radiographic changes. Here you can go for periodebridement that is oral prophylaxis and odontoplasty. Grade 2, the bone loss on one or more aspect and it is more than 3 mm but not through to through. Here the horizontal depth also varies, there is vertical bone loss and also we can say radiographic changes. Treatment option are periodebridement, flap with odontoplasty and osteoplasty and guided tissue regeneration. Most often this GTR is successful with mandibular molars and also root resection. Grade 3 is interradicular bone loss, excess or we can say it is sometimes blocked by gingiva also. If you pass your neighbor's probe, it will go through and through. Radiographically it is visible. Treatment option, paradebridement, flap procedure, odontoplasty, root resection and hemisection. Grade 4 have very poor prognosis, interdicular bone is absent, clinically visible and through and through you can pass your neighbor pros and also radiographically visible. Here the best is debridement and flap surgery. Now a patient is there with a new denture, cannot make the sound S and TH, that's the third sound. So the problem is what? no vertical overlap. Now a patient is there taking ketoconazole that is antifungal and require antibiotic coverage. So which antibiotic cannot be given? You cannot give erythromycin. 
Now a persistent oriented fistula is present for a 12 week following the extraction of maxillary first permanent molar. So how will you treat it? You go for excision of fistula and surgical closure. Now endogenous morphine like substances which can control pain is known as angiophilins, often called endorphins. Endogenous opioids like endorphins, angiophilins and dinorphins are powerful analgesic. And they are what? They are amino acid chain polypeptide synthesized in the CNS. Now what are the symptoms for a fresh oroental communication? Remember phi is except of fluid from the nose, epicstasis unilateral, except of air from mouth into the nose, enhanced column of air lead to alteration in vocal resonance and change in voice, excruciating pain in and around the region of affected sinus. What are the symptoms in late stage pain? Purulent nasal discharge, post nasal discharge, possible sequelae of general systemic toxemic condition like fever and malaise and popping out of an antral polyp. Now what is the immediate treatment of oroental communication? First if the patient has healthy sinus, a pinhole oroental communication less than 4 mm will heal spontaneously. Remember flaps are not always necessary. A figure of 8 sutures should be made over the socket to hold the blood clot and place Pressure by gospel or the socket for one to two hour. What a standard precaution. Opening of mouth by sneezing. Avoid nose blowing, straw, cigarette sucking. Avoid any other situation that may produce negative pressure between the nasal passage and oral cavity. An antibiotic and nasal decongestant is given for 7 to 10 days to prevent infection and to enhance sinus ventilation. If oriental communication is more than 4 mm, then by simple reduction of the buccal and palatal socket wall, you can see in the uh, diagram aspirin, and undermining the wound margin to allow light approximation of both the side soft tissue. So we can have the proper closure of the defect without tension. Sometimes we have to give small palatal relaxing incision also. A protective acrylic splint can be placed to provide a barrier to the entry of food inside the communication. Now in which direction does the palatal root of the upper first molar curve? Remember it curves in facial or buccal direction. So the palatal root has a tendency to curve toward the buccal and the apparent length on the radiograph will be shorter than its actual length. What are the signs and symptoms that commonly suggest cardiac failure? So that is ankle edema and dyspnea. Let's see the suggestive right heart failure, lower limb edema, sacral edema, Hepatomegaly, increased jugular venous distension, and regurgitan murmur in the tricuspid area. Suggest your left heart failure where lungs are mostly involved, that's the lung crackles, respiratory V's, displaced cardiac apex, left sided heart murmur, which are shared finding cool peripheries, cyanosis, orthopnea, and delayed capillary refill. Now what contraindicate pulp capping? Remember an inflammation of radicular pulp is there, you cannot go for pulp capping. Let's see if you contraindication of DPC, that's a direct pulp capping. Systemic disease involvement in primary teeth, you cannot go for DPC, but nowadays with the advent of new material like uh, biodentin and MTA, you can go for DPC in primary teeth. Inflammatory sign and symptoms, preoperative tooth sensitivity, larger pulp exposure, uncontrolled bleeding from the pulp, non-restable tooth, and elderly patient. Now when tooth is twisted along its long axis, it is called what? It is known as torsion. Where all you can see hypodontia. Remember hypodontia is seen in Down's syndrome. So dear experience, that was all from my side. So please take care, prepare heart and all the best for your examination.